All right, folks, I want to welcome our guest to the show. It is Derek, a.k.a. Truth Seeker. Welcome to the show, man. Hey, brother. How are you? Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. I've been excited to talk to you. I'm glad we got hooked up. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about this paranormal thing. Let's talk about your experiences. But for those that aren't familiar with you, let's tell them a little bit about you and your background, and then we'll walk into your first experiences and encounters. Yes, sir. So um, I go by the name of Truth Seeker. So I do spiritual hip hop. Um, I'm an author. I wear many hats. It's kind of strange. It's kind of weird to introduce yourself and just pick the three, but it's a, it's a long list of things. But um, I try to articulate these encounters through whatever means I can. So that being music, art, uh, meditations, so many things that you could actually like recreate the encounters for other people to experience in uh, through through meditation. So I, I use a lot of different mediums. So wear a lot of hats, but um, all of that is starting out from the encounters, what I do today. So I'm a, I'm a Christian mystic, uh, at least that's the, the term that I, I like. Um, and all of it is about, again, encounter. I think that the mystical side of, of a mystic is someone who uh, can seek to commune with God and and the uh, ethereal world, the angelic realm, realm, heaven, ghost, everything, um, and it's a part of that experience. And I and I really believe that's a part of early Christianity. So I really enjoy both sides of that title, being a Christian for a foundational um, faith, and then the mystic side that is more expressive um, on the mystery and those things, which. Um, I'm in. It's what I do. Let's talk about what got you interested in the paranormal. Was it your first experience or was that something that you were always interested in and it just happened naturally that you started having those experiences? Yeah, um, it's the first experience and as far back as I can remember. So um, being four years old, I remember waking up in the middle of the night and having a sleep paralysis encounter and uh, waking up with beings in my room laying on my shoulders each side of my chest they were like pinning me down to the bed and i was just a little kid and i remember the fear i remember um their presence and i don't know if i couldn't speak i know i was too scared to speak because i didn't want them to know that i was awake so um that opened the door you know as an adolescence and teenager uh the type of movies that we rented at sleepovers with my cousins, the stories we told around the campfire. And I would always try to find ways to weave that in. Like, hey, have you guys ever woke up in the middle of the night and saw anything in your room? And every now and then someone would say, yeah, or my dad had it happen to them. And it's like, well, you know, what is it? Well, he said it was a witch and they're, they're African witches and they show up as shadows and you hear these different lore and stuff. So as a teenager or just, a you know, adolescence, like, finding that confirmation of like, did this really happen? Was it a dream? Are you weird? Those kind of things. So I really do trace everything that I'm doing now back to like that first initial encounter. I've talked to so many people that have had encounters similar to that. And the majority of the people that I've brought on the show claim that it was an encounter with an extraterrestrial being. They automatically assume that it's aliens. And, you know, I'm a skeptical person by mm -hmm. nature and my skeptical brain always says to me, and I say this to the people I have on the show, how do you know that the experience that you had wasn't a sleep paralysis event, right? And it was something there. Let me talk about your experience that you just described. Did you get the feeling at a later date or has it been through the studies that you've done and the things that you know now versus then that has led you down the path of believing that that, well, what do you think that was? Do you think it was an alien being? Do you think it was a demonic presence or what, what do you think was in your room at that time? It's very hard to say, you know, and I don't know. And that hence what we do with these podcasts. I'm a podcaster as well. I didn't mention that. And so, I mean, it's just to explore and not to be married to one definite thing because i don't know and it's you know that's it's scary for a lot of people because we want to have it figured out but to explore the things that it could be and maybe try to narrow it down but heck i was four years old you know and some of this stuff is slippery and i like to just play with the idea and i'm open and that's kind of what like 
you know, separates me from a lot of people because in religion as well, because I'm in Christian mystic, that's kind of my thing. Um, you got to, you have to have it all figured out. All, everything has to be played out like this. And this was, a, that was a demon. That was an alien. Yeah, that was an alien or whatever. And so people blur those lines and because they don't know, like you said, they show, they, something's in their room. It's immediately an alien. Well, what if it was a demon? Um, I, I'll go with, I mean, I like to entertain all of it. What if it was, you know, the neighbor? What if it was the neighbor who was a uh, sex offender who we left the window open that night and it was by accident and uh, you didn't know this, but he snuck in your room and we caught him in there with you. Like you, we don't know. That's how trauma has this way of like changing the scenario and having a different impression. And to you, it was a monster and it was this demon, but it was really the demon who lived next door. So I'm open to explore all of them. And so that takes the power away because I am the skeptic. I'm the skeptic looking into this as well. And I found that approaching this as a skeptic, but wanting to know and wanting to find out and do the, do the homework, um, I feel like it's opened me up for more experiences, you know, that's like, hold on, I'm not just going to fall for anything. I want to make sure this is legit because we can easily say, yeah, it was a demon or yeah, it was an alien, but it was just sleep paralysis. You woke up and your, your mind and your eyes were open, but your body was still asleep kind of thing. So, you know, what separates me from that is just this always the, the grotesque entities that were there or the this the fear and the shadows and those kind of things you know that that people talk about experiencing as well so after that first encounter or that first experience at age four what happened to you next did it progress from there was it more of the same or did you start to have different experiences yeah so i don't i, ha I didn't really have that repeat experience so um again it, it leading me down the road of horror films to be honest with you at an early age uh, to, to want to figure it out to you know be scared and intrigue and all that like th there was that aspect of like um watching a lot of horror movies and so paranormal movies and things like that so it, it led me down the road early on to be intrigued with witchcraft and so just to know that there was something or at least feel like there's something from your childhood, you know, even if I wasn't tracing it back back then, you know, uh, but always into UFOs and aliens and, and things that were otherworldly and watching those movies. And but mostly it was horror films. It was fire in the sky. It was these movies that were scare you because they almost seemed like the alien type encounters um, were negative, were trying to kill you or there could be monsters that are real because there's. You know, you see the intro to some of these movies based on a true story. And then we see the aliens coming to get Travis Walton and I'm seven. Ah, and then I went to church and they preached on it at church in a little small backwoods Baptist church, Hellfire Brimstone, like they preached on that movie. And I remember that's like the only thing I remember from the church was they like, oh, you seen it too? Like, are these things real? So it's just knowing that something beyond the veil exists. And so. Um, the witchcraft thing is what was the next step of like opening up encounters and believing in the unseen. Well, let's talk about how you got into that, because I know I have friends who practice witchcraft now today and everybody's path to that is different. What did your path look like and how did you get into that? And tell us what that path or where that path led you. It looked like all the horror movies that I watched combined. Uh, that's what it led up to it. And that's what I experienced in it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it was um, that intrigue for like, you know, the, the spirit realm of wanting to know if it exists and the music and the movies like it all. There was like touches of it and all of that. And I think the movie The Craft uh, that came out in the 90s really opened me up to what looked like a beautiful uh, type of spirituality that they were dealing with. But obviously the the, the main one of the main girls was chose the, the dark side and to use her magic for evil. But those little things plant seeds. Right. Um, and so I was just as a teenager, just getting books and stuff like that and being drawn to those people at school. Um, but I was always the one to take it <laughs> the next step further and I actually do the rituals 
that we're reading about in these books, you know, and some of them scared me and, and those things. Um, I, I, I became a Christian in 1998. I, I was invited to a prayer meeting and um, I didn't want to go. Uh, we, we were living with this, this man and his son and his son was in Bible college and he kept inviting me to church. Didn't want to go to that and um, didn't want to go to the prayer meeting, but he just kept on and on. But he was like an older brother type. And so he said, come and go to this prayer meeting with me. I said, oh, I don't want to go, man. I'm not into that. I'm like 13, I guess I was. And he said, well, this one's going to be a little bit different. There's going to be a prophet there. You should come. You'll like it. I was like, well, what's that? What's a prophet? And he said, a prophet is kind of like a Christian psychic. And so for me being 13, I'm like, that sounds cool. Sure, I'll, I'll come to that. It's like he can, you know, know things about you and stuff. Like, Heck yeah. So we went to that prayer meeting and there I, I gave my life to Christ. Somebody sat down on the couch next to me and asked me if I um, wanted to ask, wanted Jesus to forgive me of my sins. And I told him, yeah, I didn't want him to hold him against me. Right. Yeah. I want him to forgive me. And it was just this beautiful spirit in the, in the room. Like it was the beautiful music was playing and people were singing with their eyes closed. And this was in an apartment. And um, when, when I prayed that prayer, the guy led me in the prayer of salvation or whatever. And um, I, I meant it, but I felt something happen. Like I felt a, tremendous heat enter my body and like go through every cell of my being and like it was on fire and I was shaking and trembling and sweating and, and I was crying and it was like this supernatural encounter where I felt like every bad thing that I had ever done that people knew about or didn't know about like it was being erased and purged from me and this was at 13 and so for me being intrigued with the spirit world and um, all of that stuff, this was like a real encounter where it's like, it left me changed, you know? So I, I became a Christian and I did that for really a couple months until I started going to school and I got back in the wrong crowd. But while I was doing the Christian thing, like the, the prayer meetings was like that encounter happened to me every time that I would pray, maybe not as like intense as the first, but it was like this energy that would pulsate and move through my body and it was blissful and it was something like tangible that was otherworldly. And so there was something real to it. And I fell away from that. And then I got into the witchcraft because I was still intrigued with the spiritual stuff, but um, wasn't a Christian. Wasn't, you know, didn't was I wasn't living a life that was conducive with that. So once you got into the witchcraft, what kind of things were you experiencing? Were you having experiences while you were doing these rituals or what did that look like as far as the experiences? Um, the experiences really didn't uh, happen to the end. Um, I, I ended up meeting a warlock who was like an older guy, he was like in his late forties and he would just tell stories and he would have parties and hangouts at his house with just tons of teenagers hanging out. And I, we'd stay over there and I just pick his brain, ask him, him about the occult and the encounters and what did you see and what did it look like? And he's got these stories and he can tell you what the spirit looked like and if it was bad and what, what happened and stuff. So I would pick his brain and he would kind of teach us, a, us rituals and stuff. And I had all the books and I would try to do the book rituals and stuff and like nothing really worked um, for the most part until things started to get real when I stole something from the warlock. I was living I was living in Louisiana and he was in Alabama and I was dropped off for the weekend for my birthday to visit my girlfriend and all my old friends because I was I moved out of town. And I was like 15 at this time, 14, 15. And um, I was stealing from all my friends that I was staying with. I got dropped off on a Friday. My mom was gonna come pick me up on a Sunday night. And so I spent two nights with different friends and I'm stealing everything from them. She ended up having car problems and it's gonna, hey, it's gonna be Monday. I'll come get you Monday, find you a place to stay. I'll be there Monday morning. Okay, I can't steal. I can't stay with any of the friends that I stole from. Cause like I had a duffel bag with all like t-shirts and video games and just teenager stuff, CDs. But if like, I can't go back over there. <laughs> They're probably looking for it. And um, so we ended up staying one night in my girlfriend's treehouse, And so I went and stayed with her 
and uh, she was living with her parents and everything. And then the next day we're just hanging out with people. My mom calls again, this car is still not running. Well, I'll be there tomorrow, find you another place to stay. So it's like Tuesday and I'm still there, me and my cousin. And so we end up staying with the warlock. So we, he let us sleep on his couch. He was, he was, he didn't want to, but it's like, sure, you got to sleep on the couch. And we did. I, he had some video games and stuff. It was actually the Dungeons and Dragons Nintendo game. And I took it and I brought it across the street to put it in my duffel bag that was in another friend's closet that I stole from him as well. But it was hit, pushed down and just hid. So that night we're hanging out at his house and there's just people everywhere. It's just like kind of like turns into a party every night. And um, we're sitting down and there's all these like warlock dudes there. They're all older than the teenagers hanging out, 15, early 20s. These guys were in their 40s and 50s. And they're all wearing all black and they're all sitting on the couch across from me and my cousin. And there's people everywhere. And somebody lights up a joint and they're passing it around and stuff. And it's like, cool, we're just hanging out. And my one of my friends walks in the door holding the Nintendo cartridge that I stole and handed it to the warlock who's sitting directly across from me. And I seen him and he handed it to him and they, he looked at the other warlocks and said, okay, let's do it. And I'm like, oh God, cause these dudes were into gang activity. Like they're in like witchcraft gang stuff. So into fighting and robbing and doing all that, that kind of stuff, but the witchcraft side of it too. Like it was a, it was legit. It was their life. It was their religion. And a lot of the, the so-called, you know, kids and teenagers, they were in, in on it too. So I was like, Oh, this is, this is going to be bad. So they, he gets up and he's making eye contact with me and he walks to the back of the house. And then the next guy gets up and they all do it. They're looking at me. I'm like, Oh God. And they all get up and walk out and they all leave. They all go to the back of the house and the party's still going and me and my cousin sitting here, he's with me. I said, hey, we got to go. We need to go right now. Why? They just, they're smoking a joint and there's all these girls here. I was like, no, no, no. We got to go now, dude. Like, they're probably going to get a baseball bat or we're going to get tied up. Like, it's not going to be good. We got to go. It's like, why? I said, man, just go. We get up and walk outside. I said, man, they found the stuff. I was stealing, bro. We got to, we got to go. We got to go. Like, we're going to get jumped. It's not gonna be good. So there was a random guy hanging around his uh, around his car with with these girls. And I said, "Hey, bro, can you give us a ride down the street? I uh, really need a ride, just right down the road." Down the road was my girlfriend's parents' house, where we stayed like two nights before in the treehouse. Let's just go to the treehouse, stay there, let everything blow over. The guy lets us gives us a ride, just just like two miles down the road. Get in the car, drive there, but he lets us out like at the end of the driveway so we can kind of sneak so that her parents can't see us I'm trying to sneak to the the tree house so we're kind of going through the bushes and stuff like that and the tree line and and it looks like somebody's in the yard i can see like a light moving in the yard and we say hey hold on there it's her dad let's wait let's let that light go away and so the sun's starting to go down and we're sitting here watching that that light and it never goes away so it's like let's try to go around the back of this field maybe we can go in the back way so we go around to this open field, and as we go around the corner, this entity appeared out of nowhere, out of thin air. Um, it was darker than the blackest of night. Um, my best way to describe it, I always say that it looked like a eight foot tall camel. Appeared out of nowhere, ran past me and my cousin, <sighs> screamed, knocked us both to the ground and vanished. Uh, when it passed us and we got up freaked out what what the heck what is that oh my god and we, we made a beeline for the uh tree house so that experience you would think would scare you hey this is nothing to, nothing to play with like you're dealing with real magic you're really you're dealing with darkness and people who are you know a lot stronger than you and uh you know it didn't it didn't scare me it was like, oh, I can get that good too. This is real. I got to dive in deeper. And so it, that's when I got even deeper into those practices and really was trying to do every ritual that I could get my hands on to see one that worked. Like which one is it? It was it Wicca. Was it Satanism? Like I just did them all within a span of just a couple months. 
and um, it wasn't good. Well, there's so much stuff out there with what people call dark entities. I've had people on the show. I did a show recently. Well, it was like an interview I did probably a year ago, and I just posted it over on the show a couple of weeks ago. And it was this kid out in California, and he was having a lot of these sort of encounters or experiences with these dark entities. He was hearing things and other people weren't. He was seeing yeah. things that other people weren't. And that's one of the questions that, you know, I asked John when I had him on the show, because I, a lot of people like, this guy's clearly mentally ill or he's got mental ill. He's got mental issues, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. And I'm like, hold on just a second. You know, it's not always that. Now, of course, that's got to be something that you bring into the mix when you're talking about this stuff. But through your experience with what you saw in dealing with those things and those entities, how, do you, where are they coming from? Are people manifesting these things? Is it through these rituals that people are bringing these things? Or do you think they're amongst us all the time? I think both. I think both. I think there, there's, there's energies that are, that are dormant that you can create stuff out of. So you do create and manifest it. Even if it's a brand new thing, you have to give it a body. And so that's what come, I come to find out that he had a, a protection spell on his belongings. Uh, several months later, I'm, I went back to visit and I couldn't wait to talk to him. I was scared to see him, but I was like, Hey, I want to apologize, man. I just, that was dumb of me. I, I'm sorry or whatever, but you got to tell me what was it? What, like, what was it? And he's laughing. He's like, I know, I know what happened. It's like, how do you know what happened? Like, he told me it was a, it was a um, elemental spirit that he summoned that he had the protection spell and it was already on his belongings that there's a border around his property that if any of his belongings left his property that the spirits would go and bring it back for him and it would find a way to get it and then go out and torment or at least teach that person a lesson who stole from him and um you know that that was you know, when you get into that, like, like, and you know, an elemental spirit and, uh, and how to create them and what, what are they made of? There's a lot of elements to it and, and it gets really deep. Um, and that's just one form, you know, that, that I, I experienced that way and to tie into the psychosis part of it and, uh, you know, mental illness, if you will, part of it, um, doing all those rituals and opening doors it seemed like um that started happening to me like i started hearing voices um it's one thing to I, I mean i had the encounters where i would be sitting on the couch at home by myself at 14 and the wind blows through the house and you hear the whispers i mean just like in the movies you can't understand them what the oh my god two in the morning I'm waiting for my mom to get home because I don't want to go to sleep. My mom's working at a bar. She gets home 2, 3, 12 sometimes. And I'm like staying up watching late night television with all the lights on in the house because I've experienced this stuff and I know it's real. And I'm doing rituals in the back room, but then scared to deal with the consequences when they come to say hello. Um, so starting to hear them that way. And then it got so bad to where when I was just gung ho doing them all, they would like pull me into a trance in mid conversation. I would be talking with my girlfriend. We were living together in uh, Louisiana in mid conversation. I would pause and get stuck and I would go into this realm and I would see colors and shapes and faces and voices And there. It seems like they're seeing me as some type of conduit. That's something that, that they can get the attention of something here in the physical realm. And they're all trying to talk to me at one time and they're speaking different languages and I couldn't breathe. I got pale and I begin to cry because it was just like terror. And then I will come back to my body and my girlfriend's like, what's, what's wrong? What's, what's going on? And I'm just like, Oh my God, I don't know. I don't know. And I'm like trying to catch my breath. And then it, it, that continued to happen. Um, maybe three times or something. It didn't happen a lot, but each time I felt like a piece of me was like stuck in between those worlds. And I would come back and I, and I was like, I came back haunted. There's a song that really um, sounds like my experience by Nine Inch Nails. It's called Came Back Haunted. 
talking about seeing something on the other side. They made me promise to never tell, but you know me, I can't help myself. I came back haunted. And I, um, it was psychosis, hearing the voices, being pulled into those trances, trying to go out in public and everyone looking at me. And I felt like they knew things about me. Why? Because I knew things about them. Like there was like psychic abilities or whatever. ESP went from zero to 100, blown wide open. And I know what these people are thinking about me. I know what they, I know they just beat their kid. I know he's cheating on his wife. I mean, just, just at once in the supermarket, I got to get out of here. I got Oh, and everybody's just looking at me and I look up and literally like their eyes are, everyone's looking at me like I'm, it's very strange, um, but it was scary. I couldn't look people in the eye because I knew things about them. I couldn't talk to people. I'd have to whisper in my girlfriend's ear what I wanted to order at McDonald's because I couldn't look to people and tell them. And um, that's when I was like, yeah, this is, it's got to stop. This is insane, insanity. And, um, and it was insanity. It was psychosis, um, watching certain things on the television, anything that was negative about disease. If somebody mentioned it, immediately there was like a transfer and I believe that I had it 100%. Testicular cancer, I was watching like the doctor show or whatever, and some dude had it and it's like, you got testicular cancer. And it's like over and over repeating in your head like something's telling you. Like, and there's like this overwhelming belief, like, oh, you're going to die from testicular cancer or brain cancer. You got a brain tumor. That's just, just, it just, it was so weird. They, I couldn't control my thoughts. I felt like something was taking my mind from me. And um, that's when it hit the peak and I, I hit rock bottom and knew that I needed Christ back in my life. The bliss, the peace that I had just a couple of years before, like I had to have it. Like I was going to be in a straight jacket somewhere on, you know, slobbering on myself. It's just what was coming for sure. And, um, you know, I, I share that story and, uh, that was over 22 years ago. I share that story and people go straight to the mental illness thing and you need to get help and you should have got medicine and all those kind of things. But I tell you what, like it stopped when I like told my girlfriend, listen, I can't live like this. I got to, I went and threw everything away. All the, the idols and the posters and everything that I could salvage, I threw it away. Um, I, I sold and, and pawned what I could to get money because we were, we were living together and I didn't have any money. So we took the money and, and went and bought Bibles. My girlfriend's freaking out though. I'm like throwing everything I own away. What are you doing? And I was like, no. Nah. So you gotta, I gotta go come back to God. There's no way like, I had an episode the night before. I'm coughing up blood. Like it was dark, man. Okay, I have to like consciously make myself breathe. Like that's how the, the thoughts aren't cohesive. Like every breath you have to sit there and like, cause if you don't think about breathing, you're gonna die and stop breathing. Like imagine that for, for a few days. That's weird, man. I mean, most of us, a, a lot of people experienced that recently. I'll say that. And it is weird and it is scary, but when I rededicated my life to Christ and I knew that there was going to be peace immediately back in my life. I knew it. I've been running from it my whole life, if you will. And uh, just to do it the right way, you know, to, to, to seek the things of the spirit and to be a good person. Um, I believe that the type of life that I was living, um, I got to see what was around me. Let's say that like, the stuff I was entertaining, the gang activity, robbing, cheating, stealing, lying, doing what I can to deceive and harm people. Like I believe that has a certain vibrational frequency, if you will, that's like a beacon of like, hey, like attracts like. So if there's any spirits or any people that are that want to rob, we need other robbers to hang out with. I mean, people, you attract it to you like a magnet. And I think that when I peered into that realm, I got to see all of the low hanging fruit and a lot of the dark entities, if you will, that were um, around me or inside of me, all of that. One of the things I want to talk about before we move on is the psychic abilities you spoke of. And that's one of the things that I've talked to people about numerous times when I'm talking about cryptids. 
there's times when people have Bigfoot encounters and they say that they have this telepathic connection with this creature that speaks to them mm -hmm. in the Bigfoot community. They call it mind speak, but it's, it's a telepathic communication yeah. is what it is. Some people have had that or described that with alien entities. Mm -hmm. There is telepathic communication. Did you have that before you got into the witchcraft and the things that you were doing there? Or did that start then? And do you attribute it to that? And once you got out of that and got back into Christianity and rededicated yourself to God, did that go away or do you still have that on some level? I know there's a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It, so it, I couldn't control it by any means. I mean, it was literally zero to a hundred, which is psychosis. It just, it just is. Um, and then, yeah, when I, I don't, know that I, I had it as a kid. I, I'm sure I did, you know, just whether it was dormant or, or we don't recognize it. I'll say that because a lot of this, we just count as our imagination or kids having imaginary friends. So for me being a kid, I didn't, I didn't know. Um, I look back on a lot of stuff and definitely can see magic involved with the manifestation and wanting things and believing that something was going to happen. And it did so that, you know, as in hindsight, never, in the midst of it. Um, so all of that was connected with demons for me, you know what I'm saying? And, and the dark stuff. And so when I got out of it, I needed all of it to stop. I needed to be able to have a conversation like a regular person. And it took, it took weeks, man. It took months. It took probably years to be, to, to get, you know, level headed, but it wasn't like there was instant peace that came for me. And a lot of that, those doors were shut but a lot of it didn't want to let go. So there was, you know, this fear and this haunting and that, that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, every day was, was getting better, you know, but I would have episodes, I would have, you know, I would be reminded or like be in a, a restaurant and then I can hear my wife tunes out and everybody in the whole restaurant. I can't hear her, but I hear everybody else. And, and this is like, you know, much removed from that, you know, and being in church and all that kind of stuff. And, um, so there was definitely episodes uh, being attacked in my sleep and dreams and stuff like that and waking up being choked out weird stuff that as I moved further towards the light, this stuff was like, I feel like it was trying to scare me um, and just doing whatever it could. And so all of the, the so-called psychic stuff that I was involved with or, or, or privy to, if you will, um, I wanted it to stop and it did, you know, um, I began to just be in prayer a lot and go to church services and be into the music and really get lost in God's presence and peace. And that, that was a euphoric spiritual experience still is right. Real simple though. Um, and it took, man, maybe a year. I guess it didn't take long. Time is very strange looking back on this stuff because it seems like lifetimes in between each chapter, but it could have been six months. Um, it wasn't long until this stuff came back, but in a good way and slowly like easing into it. And it was from a Christian perspective. It was from biblical, you know, when I got saved at that prayer meeting, they said a prophet was going to be there. A prophet's like a Christian psychic, right? So with all of my studies and the things that I teach now, I believe there's a right way and a wrong way to do to do everything. And I think I was doing it the wrong way. I think I was I, I was I jumped into a realm, into a, a portal that I had no business being in. I wasn't welcomed in. I kicked the door in and said, let me in. And I, oh, God, this is what you guys are doing. And it, you know, I feel like it about killed me. So there's a lot of gratitude in my life that I made it out of that. But. But yeah, everything's come full circle over the years. It's been 22 years since since that happened. And um, I still, you know, operate in that in the telepathic communication, if you will, or pre uh, um, uh, cognizance and being able to, to know things before they happen and um, synchronicities and um, the, the so-called aliens or, or angels, whatever terminology one or demons, whatever you're, you know, whatever your interpretation of such things are, yeah, they do uh, communicate telepathically. You, I would say their energy precedes them. You know, like a lot of those entities, um, who they are, what they are is in their genetic makeup. 
And so, and that, and that is a feeling that is a, as, is a, uh, an element or an elemental that doesn't have a physical body, but they have a, a, a frequency, a vibrational frequency. Everything's vibrating, everything's moving. So whether they're able to speak through that, uh, through dreams, through being at the edge of the bed and sending you thoughts, being above your house, sending you thoughts, or some of these other cryptids and, and things like uh, Sasquatch that many people talk about, communicating uh, telepathically in a, in a spiritual way. So I believe in all that. I've experienced a lot of it and still experience it. And uh, it exists. It, it's like a tool. It's just a thing, right? And and it can be used for good or bad. And I experienced the bad side of it. I believe that every level in the spirit world has a resonating level with it. So I believe as humans, we start out at level zero clean slate, if you will. Um, and my introduction to the spirit world and through sp to spirituality was taking maybe three steps backward. And at, at that three steps backward, it was psychic abilities. It was seeing demons. It was seeing entities in my home and them communicating with me. But it was all death, chaos, murders, terror, threatening, grotesque stuff, right? Wanted that door shut. Now, years later, I believe going up that spiritual hierarchy, when you get to level positive three, which you get back to zero, then you go up to positive three, those same spiritual gifts, spiritual abilities exist, synchronicity. And then so many people are speaking about that empathy, being able to walk through Walmart, and people's like, Oh, I just I can feel the energy. I know what people are thinking. And oh, I got to I'm a, and but there's a way to handle it. So not a lot of people know about the dark side. You know, I mean, I talk about spirituality and and all this, and I talk to people about their experiences, but not many people know that whatever they're experiencing with the bliss and with the beautiful things of angels communicating telepathically and telling them where to go and telling them to do this and that everything's going to be okay and reading the Bible and there's just like beauty to it. All that exists at negative three where the synchronicities are, I'm going to kill you. You're going to choke on your own vomit tonight because you, whatever, like what, I mean, just the darkest things you can think of. And it is synchronicity because it's reminding you everywhere. It's in every movie that you watch. It's in every billboard that you see. It's in every conversation. If you tried to read the Bible, the Bible verses would be about you dying and God hating you. Like everything is against you. It's a form of paranoia. It's what it is. And it exists at level negative three. Let's say that. But at positive three, you have pronoia. It's not that God and the devils and the universe and the angels are trying to kill you. No, they want to help you. They want to assist you that everything exists to, to help you both be very clear are a form of psychosis. You're living in a world within a world that many people aren't privy to and sharing this stuff, breaking it down. You can very easily sound like a crazy person. And if you don't know how to balance such energy, you could end up where I was headed. And I think a lot of people end up in psych wards or taking their own life. So I feel like I have a duty and a responsibility to at least share my story, what worked and what's working for me. Let's talk a little bit about some of the alien UFO angel type of encounters that you've had. Cause I, there's a place I want to go with that, but let's talk a little bit about some of the things that you've experienced and then we'll go into maybe what those things are, what you believe those things are. What have you had as far as experiences that you could say maybe related to ETs or even angels? Um, depends on, you know, the terminology people want to use. We say, I, I use this terminology early on summoning UFOs being able to go outside and pray and ask, speak it, lift my hands and ask for an, an encounter, ask for a sighting, uh, contingent upon um, thinking that they had our best interest in mind and that they were the angels of the Bible, right? It wasn't as, you know, because many Christians and many people believe that it's demons that, it, that are out there kind of thing. Um, but through my study, it opened me up to, study of the Bible, uh, books that were taken out of the Bible, and then seeing a couple other videos um, of people doing it. 
And it was like moving past that threshold to, hey, well, try it and see. And um, I started out in the fear thing, thinking that aliens were demons too. And I kind of dove into that in the Christian perspective, because that's all they teach. Until I was like, hold on, this is biased information. Like, is there anything unbiased? And then when I found the unbiased information and people who were having encounters, they were beautiful, amazing experiences where the spirit realm would be able to pop into this one. So that's what started it, me just spending hours and hours under the stars and the things that I would see um, made me a believer. And um, seeing stars that are like, they just look like they're twinkling, but then they start pulsating and changing colors, but they look like that when they're twinkling anyway with the naked eye, but I would keep my eyes on certain ones and it would, something was like directing me to, to look at it. So when you talk about that, that connection or, or telepathic communication, watch the star, keep looking, keep looking. And all of a sudden it gets big and a little star comes out of it and flies off and dissipates. Oh God, what was that? And you're asking for these things and I'm asking God and the angels. And if they're the seraphim, the cherubim of the Bible, the fiery ones, let me see them. And if they have my best interest in mind and it took time, like I had to stay out this night instant or whatever. Um, but I started seeing so much and little encounters like that to eventually seeing during the day, um, the sky filled with, um, I don't know if you, I call them entity. I wouldn't call them ships or anything. They just, they would be these bars. They started out these black bars. So these black bars, like, I don't know the number, man, maybe 50 or some. So bars all in the open sky as I'm driving. And I've been listening to UFO material. I've been looking for them all day while I'm driving in my trucker job and I'm coming back home and I'm looking while I'm driving. Like that's how much I wanted to see. And I was into it. And I believed it until I saw something. And then I saw the encounter, these black bars in the sky and they were black, but then they would turn to these beautiful white lights during the day. And then they would continue to turn and then they would disappear. All of them in sync spread throughout the whole sky what the heck? And then they would turn back. They would turn into the light back around to the black bar and then they would disappear. And I saw that just for a minute, maybe just enough to let me see it. Um, you know, and it's like, what is it? What was it kind of thing? And th that's like the initiation that's, you know, that, that you move forward and then you're awake, you know? And I think, uh, just like the demons, <laughs> We're like, hey, we need a conduit. The angels need a conduit too. All, all disembodied spirits, all gods need a human to speak for them. They need a messenger or a prophet. So I've battled so many times. I've seen a UFO, something I can't explain. I, I don't know if it was a little green or gray man flying the ship that I saw, but it was definitely unidentified and it was flying. Mm -hmm. And it has stuck with me since I was 16. And... I've always tried to seek those answers of what these things are. And I've went back and forth. I used to think it was alien entities that were traveling yeah. billions of light years from, you know, wherever they're coming from. And I've went into more of a, maybe they're already here kind of thing. Maybe it's an interdimensional thing. It sounds like to me, I don't know. I don't want to put words in your mouth. I don't necessarily want to be definitive about it, but I'm getting the feeling that you think there may be something more like, as opposed to these alien entities, you would define them as something biblical, maybe as angels. Is that what I'm hearing you say, or am I completely off base? Yeah, for me, it's, it's totally um, angelic and they, they travel from somewhere, right? Whether it's through a, a dimension or a portal or a wormhole, or they're here cloaked the whole time. Um, now, as far as like physical entities that live on another planet and park in those things like i i don't know um i've seen what looks to be nuts and bolts ships in the midst of that i say nuts and bolts the, the cigar shaped craft which doesn't really look like nuts and bolts but it is a classic sighting i, I mean i've seen those during the day too um but for me yeah it's uh it's it's definitely spiritual they know what you're thinking they they can hear you um and I, I trace it back to to the Bible um, as the Israelites were 
traveling through the wilderness and through the desert, uh, God would lead them through as a cloud by day and a fire by night. So they would see that whatever this was that was leading them, it looked like a fire and glowing at night, a light. And then during the day, it looked like a cloud. And so that kind of uh, terminology that is all throughout the scriptures kind of gives me this reassurance of being a student of the Bible and one who is a devotee of, you know, Jesus, if you will. Um, if they experienced it and they saw it, well, maybe I can too. And if it was a good thing and they were watching out and watching over, that kind of gave me the reassurance to move forward with it. So, um, you know, I can't say that I've never seen them in like a human humanoid form. Um, most of it is spiritual. Most of it is um, start the initiation and then the dreams start happening or the telepathic downloads or, hey, look here. The weird thing is, is that it sounds so much like your own thoughts. And so that's the weird thing. It, it, it's like our imagination, our third eye, pineal gland is a receiver. Literally, our body is a receiver to receive information and frequencies. When a, when a spirit or a ghost steps in into the room, uh, um, you get chills. All the pores on your body stands, stand on end. Your hair stands directly up. Hair on the back of your neck, it's a, it's a sixth sense. And you can receive transmission that something is here. Something is about to happen. And your body is even in tune with that. Like the scripture says, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And knowing this, this stuff and having these experiences, my study of the scriptures makes these encounters pop out to me that other people just read over without an understanding because they don't have a, a reference or a frame of understanding. And there was many people in the scriptures who had these type of encounters with angels and with spirits, um, if you will. Um, when I'll say when I when, when I mention angel, I, I would say I say that just to just to differ from a demon, right? Something of that's just positive or negative. But there's so many different types of spirits in this hierarchy that that are in between that have different jobs and 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 just do one thing. And um, angel, the word angel just means a messenger, and so some type of spiritual messenger of God. Yeah, there's even people that I've had on the show that have talked about Bigfoot encounters. And some people believe that they're offspring, possibly, of the Nephilim, these fallen mm -hmm. angels that have bred with humans and created these different types of creatures. So it's it's always fascinating to me, you being a Christ, Christian mm -hmm. mystic, for example, the lens that people see things through. I'm very agnostic when it comes to religion. I don't really talk about religion and politics much on the show. So this is a little it's kind of stepping out there for me, but I'm more of an agnostic when it comes to those kind of things. And I don't really have that lens to see things through. So I'm fascinated by your take on just all the things, right? The demons, yeah. the, the angels, the possibility of maybe extraterrestrials and even cryptids. As a Christian mystic who has studied these things, how does that lens work for you when it comes to all these unknown things or these things that people seek or say that they've had experience with, how do you reconcile all of that with your religious beliefs and your understanding of the Bible and those things? How does that work for you? Yeah, it goes, it goes hand in hand for me. Like I want to make sure that if it's something that I believe or something that I'm trying to do or I feel drawn to, I like, I want a reference for it in the Bible. And so that's just kind of my thing. And it's led me to um, to study the scriptures, to, to see if there's anything there, if it's good, if it's bad, those kind of things, if there's any danger to it. And like you said, the Nephilim and those kind of things. And and, and this is a scary conversation for a lot of people. Um, and I have that conversation. It's what we do. Um, but it's starting to make sense for a lot of people, too. Um, the fear thing only lasts for so long. If you keep, if you win people with fear, you got to keep them with fear. And so once people taste liberty and empowerment through spirituality, through God, through their religion, um, you know, you can't really put them back under this, this fear thing. And there's this, this boldness to, to boldly um, seek those things out. And so in, 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 in my worldview, it, the ancient world, 
I mean, just look at any antiquity. I mean, just pick, take your choice. Um, was a lot more spiritual. Was a lot more. Um, there was a lot more fantasy oriented. And knowing that, when I read the scriptures, I I, I'm, I now see magic and mystery and spiritual practice and breath work and angels and summoning all of it. If you don't have the grid or the lens to, to see it that way, there's no way you can interpret it. It's like those religious texts are written in su such a way where they're a riddle and a mystery that are hidden and concealed within another riddle and mystery. And we've shown you what it looks like in the imagination. So now when you read it, oh yeah, that's a demon. Or that's this word means this, this word means that. But um, beyond breaking the words down, reading it literally, like just going back to the literal translations, there's so much in it. But once you start looking up what those words mean, there's so much more in it. The angels have names and characteristics and what they do and those kind of things. So I see Jesus doing it. I see everyone in the Old Testament and I see it in every religion. I see all the religions doing it. I see uh, Greek philosophy, the Greek mythology. I see the Babylonian tradition. I see Hinduism, um, the Sumerian texts, all of this. They all were people who were tapped into something that was greater than what we can taste, touch, see, and hear with our physical senses. And so that right there for me is the invitation. Knowing it, you, it was scary because I knew that those other ones had some of that stuff. But then now when I'm seeing this stuff in the scriptures and Jesus doing it and his disciples and Paul and then Moses and those guys like, oh, OK, yeah, this is let's try it. Let's try it. You know, if, if God is good and and there's angels that are going to protect me, then I ask for him to come and protect me in the midst of this situation and let my mind be open to childlike wonder and faith like it was when I was a kid, when I believed in those things and, and when, where many people believed in those things until it was taken from them. So that's the worldview to, to explore. Well, let's talk a little bit about your book, what people can expect if they pick up the book and talk about your show. I know you do your own podcast, so mm -hmm. tell us about your show and what they can expect if they tune in over there. For sure. Um, it's cool. The cool thing is that, you know, everything that I do kind of works hand in hand. It's in tandem. Like my music, I do spiritual and esoteric hip hop. And it, it's about the things that I cover on the podcast. And the things I wrote about in the book are these experiences that I'm talking about now, but also biblical references. Um, and if I have any experiences with um, these things. And so dealing with magic, dealing with things, mostly in the Bible. Again, the things that people look over and they wouldn't think that this is what it's talking about um, because they don't know the word or they don't have the reference. So I kind of give my experience, my worldview, what the ancient world believed, and then some biblical references um, to go with it. And there's a lot to it. So covering aliens, covering ghosts, disembodied spirits, reincarnation, many of those things. And it's like an overview of many subjects. So I wanted it to kind of be almost like a, like I didn't want to put it out without with leaving something on the table of like looking over my encounters well i got to talk about that and symbolism and just a little bit of everything so it's a thing where you can kind of just pick it up and read anywhere about fairies and elementals and that encounter and then what some of the early mystics believed and some people into witchcraft and or what people would call witchcraft like people who are experts on that stuff our problem is we have so many people creating content that only have they only see it from one perspective and or have a negative experience. So now they are an expert or think they are from that aspect of like, yeah, if the spirit, if the shadows are in your room, they're demons. And that's the only thing. And putting myself out there as a beacon, I get tons of messages. Hey, I woke up and it was a red ball of light in my room. What was it? And I, and I come from the religion, I think that's good. Again, my worldview of knowing that somebody's going to tell you what it is. And that doesn't mean that's what it was. So I can't tell you what it is. I can tell you what it might be, the experiences that I've had and other people that I've interviewed and what they've said and 
what you could try this, 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 and this, but at the end of the day, the ball is in your court. The ball is in your hands that you have to come. So if it's something dangerous and it's something terrifying, you know, judge by the fruit. If it's something beautiful and intrigue, even though it's scary, you know, it could be something greater. And uh, that's, that's uh, something I feel that it's lacking from the religious studies um, from, from all of this material. Well, Derek, I really appreciate you coming on the show and sharing your experience and your perspective, man. It's been refreshing and I'm honored and it's been my pleasure to have you on the show, man. I really appreciate you coming on. Hey, thank you so much for having me, man. I love talking about this stuff. Mm -hmm.